very good morning <coughs> so in continuation with our uh, last class we discussed about uh, solar collectors as well as uh, solar uh, storage uh, devices and uh, in the same uh, solar uh, discussion we move on to the next interesting topic called uh, uh, solar applications uh, applications of solar energy yes uh, so this is another interesting topic where we are going to discuss in this today's class uh, this uh, solar applications or application of solar energy uh, is categorized into a three important uh, categories like first one a direct a thermal application a solar electric application and energy from biomass and bio gas yes come to the first one first category it is a based on a direct thermal application means here the direct solar radiations from the sun is used for a as a thermal uh, applications means like heat and temperature okay so some of the applications like heating and cooling the space or in buildings uh, or in hospitals or in house we can use this type of applications means directly we convert that solar energy into an heat energy okay so this is a one type of application it's a direct application direct thermal application and second category is a solar electric application so means this solar energy from the sun we are going to convert into a electric energy directly or indirectly we are going to convert it to a electric energy that's why it is called as a solar electric application and this solar electric applications can again divided into some subcategories like the first one is a solar thermal methods means we are going to convert that electric solar to electric energy with the help of solar thermal methods and this involves a high temperature it involves a high temperature uh, but the uh, first one direct thermal application involves a mediate mediate or a moderate temperature less than 100 or less than 150 degree but here it's a more than 400 or 500 degree temperature okay so for this we can use a concentric uh, uh, collectors or focusing type of collectors from this we can convert that uh, uh, solar energy into an electric energy it's a one way and second subcategory is a photovoltaic method it means we are using a solar cells or in photovoltaic cells just to convert a direct solar energy into an electric energy here we don't need any other mechanisms or any other uh, machines directly that solar energy falling onto the solar cells and it will convert into a uh, solar electric energy uh, with the help of uh, semiconductors it's an another method and this we will discuss in the uh, later chapter third module and next conversion is a uh, solar energy into an electric energy without use of machineries uh, and this is called as a thermoelectric conversion so this uh, thermo means uh, of course it is a heat so heat into an uh, electric conversion it's an another uh, type of uh, subcategory so here also we are not using any machines and here directly the thermal energy is converted into electric energy and another uh, subcategory is a wind energy we already know that wind energy from the wind energy with the help of windmills we are going to convert a wind energy into a electric energy but this wind energy is just due to because of or it is an indirect form of solar energy from the sun only because of heating of the atmosphere it will raise the uh, velocity of the wind so that it will uh, have the some uh, kinetic energy in the wind and that kinetic energy is converted into mechanical energy and mechanical to electrical energy with the help of windmills so this wind energy is also an indirect form of uh, solar energy and next another type is a ocean thermal energy and we already know that ocean thermal energy that ocean is in a very big uh, collector areas okay and this ocean can uh, uh, divided into in three uh, zone so ocean having a very depth uh, and the upper layer intermediate layer and bottom layer so upper layer always with an uh, exposed to the sun uh, and it have a uh, ambient temperature or an atmospheric temperature intermediate temp uh, intermediate layer having a some somewhat bit less temperature but in the bottom uh, the temperature of the ocean always a cooler one okay uh, when compared to the upper layer so there is a temperature difference between the upper layer and the bottom layer and by utilizing this temperature difference we can uh, generate electricity or we can use for any other useful purpose and 
third uh, subcategory is energy from the biomass or biogas and this is an uh, a biogas is refers to the a conversion of conversion into any clean fuels or any other energy related products of organic matter derived directly or indirectly from the plants and the uh, animals and this is also an indirect form of solar energy we already discussed in our uh, introduction class so uh, with the help of a photosynthesis process and in presence of light only the plants will prepare their food so this is an indirect form indirect form of a solar energy and this biomass uh, biomass means it's a waste of agriculture waste forest waste okay animal waste animal residues and these are all comes under the biomass and by using this biomass we uh, we can convert this bio uh, solids okay biofuels and biogas and this biofuels can use for the transportation purpose biogas used for the cooking and other purpose and biofuels used for the heating purpose like this we have a lot of applications and this is also comes in the third category and with all this uh, we have some classifications of solar electric applications which is in our uh, slides the first application is solar water heating or a space heating so solar water heating means you know in most of the houses uh, uh, on the terrace uh, you just observe there is a water heating okay solar water heating so with the help of solar uh, rays or uh, solar radiations uh, the water get heated and that heated water can use for the bathing purpose and the solar heating space heating means uh, if you want to heat a room or any uh, space okay so with the help of uh, solar radiations uh, we can use uh, heat the space or any building if you want to heat or a, a, in um, uh, hospitals or any industries if you want to heat a particular um, room or a particular space you can use this type of applications and space coolings uh, even it is also used for as an um, air cooler it is used as a air cooler so if you want to uh, cool a space or if you want to cool the room so you can use this uh, solar energy and thermal electric conversions that is what we discussed so with a direct solar rays we can convert that thermal energy into an electric energy and photovoltaic cells yes this is another applications with the help of uh, photovoltaic cells we can convert the electric energy uh, electric energy from the solar energy and solar distillation yes so solar distillation is an another important application where we convert that hard water into an soft usable water with the help of this uh, solar energy we can convert and solar pond yes it's an another beautiful example solar pond uh, and it is uh, entirely different from the natural pond so with the help of solar pond we can um, have the very high temperature water and that high temperature water can use for any other um, electric generations electricity generations or else uh, uh, any other useful industrial applications uh, we can use and solar pumping yes of course in the agricultural purpose uh, nowadays uh, uh, there is an um, power fluctuation in the villages and uh, that directly affects the farmers and uh, the farmers cannot able to uh, supply water continuously for their crops and because of that uh, they may uh, they may uh, loss uh, loss may happens so to avoid this one we can use a solar pumping with the help of solar pumping uh, uh, yes of course we continuously supply water uh, for water means we can use for in the irrigation purpose and continuously we can supply water for the crops and we can we get a very uh, very advantages when compared to the uh, normal um, electric uh, supply and agricultural industrial process yes in the some of the agricultural means some of the crops like uh, they need uh, they want to dry okay uh, of course uh, due to lack of the sun or maybe in the climatical changes uh, uh, what happens the uh, sun is not available so that uh, the crops cannot able to dry uh, so in that situations we can use this uh, solar uh, applications and with the help of the solar applications we can um, artificially create uh, or artificially we can uh, dry the crops and we can uh, go for selling or any other further applications and industrial process also some of the industry process like uh, uh, some of the heat treatments or some of the uh, process must take place with the help of heat so in that they need a heat so heat means either we can go with the combustion of any fuels of course we can generate but the combustion of fuels may uh, means it may leads to the um, uh, maybe become a costlier or maybe uh, air pollution or whatever the some of the problems to overcome this we can use this uh, solar energy and solar energy can uh, produce an uh, enough amount of heat and this heat can use for any other industrial applications solar furnace of course solar furnace means uh, to melt a, a low melting uh, metals okay so in the solar furnace we can easily uh, melt the low melting 
metals of course it's another application solar cooking yes we know that uh, cooking can directly uh, with the help of solar rays so there is an especially um, made a, a cooking uh, uh, appliances with the help of those cooking appliances we can easily cook our food with the help of solar rays it's an another beautiful uh, application of solar energy and solar production by hydrogen yes with the help of solar we can produce the hydrogen and the last application is solar greenhouse so we know that greenhouse means it's an uh, increasing the temperature increase the temperature of a space okay so and it is covered by some transparent uh, cover or a glass so uh, we artificially increase the temperature of that uh, surroundings and it is covered by a glass and this temperature can use for uh, uh, yes of course to grow some special kind of vegetables or plants or any other uh, special applications yes we can done with this is solar greenhouse so these are the some uh, typical applications of solar energy yes move on to the next interesting uh, topic it is called a solar a uh, pawn so the name uh, itself indicates that a solar pond uh, first before going to solar pond we have to discuss what is meant by pond so we already seen so many ponds nearby our uh, urban areas or villages areas so there is a natural or natural ponds because of the rain they created a, a pond so there is a natural pond so natural pond of course have a lot of uh, water it's a collecting area and directly exposed to the sun and the temperature rises but the temperature rises is that energy loss due to because of the convection okay so due to convection the energy losses and it will maintain the same ambient temperature or atmospheric temperature so that natural pond can use for irrigation purpose can use for drinking purpose or can use for any other uh, uh, rural area applications but it cannot use for the generation of electricity cannot use for uh, any other heating purpose or cooling purpose distillation purpose anything we cannot use but the solar pond is yes, exactly it is an a different and a special one by with the help of this solar pond we can have a lot of applications that we will discuss in later of this topic and this solar pond it's a natural or artificial body it's a natural or artificial body of a water for collecting and absorbing solar energy it's a la large huge amount of uh, collecting areas and this uh, it will absorb the energy from the solar and it will collect and it will store that energy in the form of heat and thus this pond uh, comes in the solar energy collection and sensible storage means this solar pond comes in the sensible heat storage means we already discussed what is meant by sensible heat and latent heat sensible heat means uh, without changing the face of the any substances only the temperature is rises that is what sensible heat only temperature rises it won't change its face from liquid to gaseous or gaseous to liquid this is called sensible latent means it will change the face but the temperature is constant so here this solar pond comes in the sensible heating okay heating storage and now uh, this uh, the simple type of this solar pond may within 5 to 10 5 5 to 10 centimeters depth and uh, this uh, radiation absorbing and with the help of a uh, one black surfaces yes you can just observe in our slides uh, there is a two pictures one picture uh, which describes the natural uh, ocean and nearby the ocean there is an artificial pond is there okay and uh, this is what uh, 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 solar pond and this is a, a construction of a solar pond and th this a uh, black color and this uh, this black color plastics uh, used to absorb the solar radiations okay and this water uh, and this black color it is in the bottom of the solar pond and come to the energy it is stored in the this low grade it's of course low grade and this energy is uh, from 6 to uh, 100 degree means we can achieve easily with the help of this solar pond we can achieve uh, 60 to 100 degree centigrade okay and uh, come to the definition so what is meant by this solar pond the solar pond we can define it as it's artificially constructed you just observe in the slide it's artificially constructed a pond in which a significant temperature rises and are caused in occur in the lower region by preventing convection that is most important it is the the definition is it is an artificially constructed pond in which a significant temperature rise are caused to occur in the lower region 
means this uh, solar point we can divide into three uh, zones that I will explain later. So in the bottom, it will absorbs and stores the energy and it will prevent the losses. This is what we call it as a specifically if you want to call it is an salt gradient solar pond or non convecting solar pond means this solar pond is it's, it's special from a natural pond means this is solar pond having a salt it having a salt means we artificially had salt to the water that is an dissolvable salt that is most important the salt is dissolved in the water and that water should be become very transparent clear so that water is dissolved the salt some special type of salt we are using and this salt is responsible to collect and store the solar energy it will collect and stores the solar energy in the bottom zone because uh, the concentration of this salt is more in the bottom layer when compared to the top layer top layer the concentration is less and in the bottom concentration is more where concentration is more there is a more temperature yes of course uh, I come to the some uh, special cases and this solar pond uh, promises an economical way of flat plate collector when compared to the flat plate collector of course having the same uh, working nature but the flat plate collector is become a costlier but it is a natural one where naturally we have the water and we have the free space and we just only cover with a, a black sheets along with some salt okay so it is become an a very economical and the energy stored by employing a mass of water for the both collection and storage of solar energy we we know uh, we don't need any storage devices a special storage devices in the pond only we can store the energy the energy is stored is a low grade of 60 to 100 degree centigrade there's a te temperature we can maximum we can attend 100 degree centigrade and this might be suitable for a variety of applications like heating and industrial applications electricity generations also we can go with and come to the so many research were taken on this solar pond and this the first research uh, were in the 1964 okay so this is the first pond have been studied experimentally and analytically in the national physical laboratory that is israel so israel took the first initiative of this solar pond in 1964 of course in india also dr gc jain in 1973 has designed and and it is operating a solar pond for a use of production of salt at a central salt and marine chemical research in institutes in bhavanagar okay and of course in the pondicherry also now we can able to see the this type of uh, solar pond and have been uh, constructed with a pond area of 100 centimeter and in the area of two meter depth it's a two meter depth so coming to the next slide so it is an uh, principal operations of this solar pond and how uh, this solar pond have become a non convective okay natural ponds have a convective one but it is a non convective one that is what we are going to discuss and this is, uh, solar pond is a mass of uh, shallow water about 1 to 2 meters deep of course we can go with a 1 to 2 meters or we can 4 to 5 meters or in the in the some uh, solar pond may 10 meters also they uh, constructed with a large uh, collection area depth is very less but the collection area is very large which acts as an heat trap that collecting area which act as a heat trap it contains dissolved salt to the generate a suitable density gradient okay and the part of this incident radiations entering the solar pond surfaces absorbed through the depth and remainder which penetrates the pond is absorbed at the black bottom that is what the black cover we placed under the bottom of the solar pond okay initially this solar pond a uh, filled with a, a fresh water and it is covered by a black color and we can add up uh, some of the 
a some of the um, salt okay so uh, here the salt or the we are having a different types of salt we can add okay so some of the salts like a magnesium chloride we can use some magnesium chloride a sodium chloride or a sodium nitrates and these are the salts we can use for a solar pond because these are dissolved easily they are dissolved easily and they have concentration varying up to 20 to 30 percentage we need a, a high concentration if more concentration having a more uh, heat trap so that we can you go with this type of salts and the the whatever the uh, material we can use for that uh, black sheets okay a black it may be the liner of an butylene rubber we can use a butylene rubber a black polythene or an napsalon re reinforcement nylon mesh we can use for using this uh, we have there is a durability as well as it's an having an, a more uh, heat absorbing capacity yes this is a typical uh, schematic diagram of uh, solar pond and this is solar pond we can differentiate with a three zone okay the first zone what we call it as a surface convection zone or upper zone second one is non convecting zone and third one is storage or bottom zone so in the figure you can able to see the top one is directly exposed to the sun and it is in contact with the atmosphere and always it is having an atmospheric temperature and it should be very transparent one so that it will allow the solar radiations to enter into the bottom and in this uh, if you go with the second figure you just observe depth versus concentration and temperature if you go with the depth if more the depth more will be the concentration and more will be the temperature if you go less depth in the top surface is there having a less depth so that the temperature is also less concentration is also less when compared to the concentration in the uh, that is what uh, salinity we can call it as a salinity means the salt concentration in the top layer having only a less than five percentage the concentration of that salt is less than five percent in the top layer but in the mi middle layer it is keep on increasing the salt content and also keep on increasing the temperature but in the bottom the salinity means the co salt concentration is more than 20 percent so that high concentration higher temperature rise okay so in the bottom zone or in the uh, storage zone we can easily achieve the higher temperature up to 100 degree but in the top layer it is of uh, ambient temperature or atmospheric temperature of 36 or 35 degree centigrade so there is a huge temp temperature difference between the top and bottom okay and uh, entire this uh, solar pond is covered with a, a black bottom and also in the second uh, figure we just observe 100 uh, percent uh, solar radiations from the sun okay it is falling onto the uh, solar pond but only it can able to absorb 16 percent and 84 percent of the heat is lost to the atmosphere so the top layer having a more heat loss more convection heat loss that is up to 84 only 16 percent can enter into the solar pond and in the bottom only 14 percent is trapped and the remaining two percent is is loss in the form of uh, convection it's only a minor loss very minor loss that's why it is called as a non-convective solar pond and in the bottom layer it's a red one it's high temperature and high concentration in the middle gradient temperature it's a less uh, of course compared to the top it's a less uh, 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 concentration is more as well as temperature is also more but in the top it's having a low temperature with a low concentration yes the extraction of uh, thermal energy by solar pond so how we are going to extract the solar energy that is most important okay and uh, this solar energy is depending on the location that is most important thing is the solar energy is also depends on the location and the water clarity and the temperature and in some uh, areas we get the more uh, solar energy when compared to the other areas in the forest we get the only small uh, solar energy but even compared to the deserts we get a more solar energy so the depending upon the locations and the clarity of water the water should be very transparent then only we have the more heat trap okay so based on this uh, we achieve the uh, heat uh, generation in the bottom zone 
and also this solar pond uh, before go, before uh, going to this extraction of thermal energy uh, another important point we have to discuss is the property of a salt i told the natural pond and solar pond is different just because of the salt what we are using and this salt is having a very high importance in the solar pond and this characteristics of this solar pond have some of important points are the first one is it must have a high value of solubility means it easily soluble in the water that is most important it is easily soluble in the water just like a water and the sugar water and the salt if add uh, so sugar to the water what happens and keep on stirring within a few minutes it completely dissolved in the water yes the same thing should happen in our salt and the solar pond okay it should be easily soluble and second important uh, point or characteristics is its solubility should not uh, vary uh, appropriately with temperature means if the high temperature solubility is high if the low temperature solubility is low it, sh it should not uh, happen okay uh, this solubility is irrespective of temperature it should be same throughout the uh, solar pond okay because solar pond having a different temperature in the bottom different temperature in the top so that it should not affect the solubility that is another characteristics and next characteristics is the solution must be adequate and transparent means after dissolving the water and this water should be transparent if it is transparent then only it will allow uh, that radiation to the bottom layer if it is not transparent it is having some dust or some any other color it will start uh, reflecting it will start reflecting the solar radiations and it won't allow solar heat into the bottom and we, we won't get any heat in the bottom zone so that it should be very transparent and it must be uh, environmentally uh, safe and it should be easily handled and it should be non toxic so these are the another uh, environmental issues the whatever the salt we are using it should be non toxic and it should be environmental friendly and it is easy to handle and the next important point is it must be available on the available easily and abundantly if it is av available abundantly then only the cost will become less if it is rarely available then the cost will become very high so that available uh, abundantly available materials only we can use as a salt just to reduce the cost and the last one is it must be inexpensive then only we can use if it is a very expensive like gold or diamond we cannot use if it is uh, very less expensive we can easily use and we can easily have uh, and we can take the benefit from that solar pond so these are the some uh, important properties should have that salt what we are using in the solar pond okay so next come to the extraction of thermal energy by solar pond and this extraction of solar energy means whatever the energy is stored okay so energy is stored uh, in the low grade thermal form here i told it's a low grade means 60 to 100 degree centigrade and with a lower uh, connective zones this uh, convections in the zone is just due to the process of heat extraction and this can ac accomplished by a process like we uh, take whatever the uh, high concentrated high temperature uh, water in the bottom layer okay in the bottom we just take that water and we do some work and again send back to the uh, solar pond so this is what the process we follow generally but of course we can uh, use another method is there means we, we just uh, instead of taking that water so in the bottom layer only we can install so many pipelines okay and in inside the pipelines we can use any uh, substances so that the substance will absorb the heat in the bottom layer but we cannot go with that method why because it have some two disadvantages like uh, the cost will increases sharply in the case of a large pond if the pond is very large we have to install a large amount of pipelines and it becomes very costly and second thing unless there is a convection around the pipe the heat transfer from the stationary hot brine to the fluid pipe will be very poor and also another drawback is if the pipe is continuously exposed to the uh, high salted content water it may get easily corroded corrosion will takes place from all these difficulties we cannot go with this uh, installation of pipe simply we will take that uh, water from the uh, solar bottom pond and we did uh, will do some work and again send back to the solar pond that is the method what we are using 
yes this is a typical working of a solar farm in electric power plant this is what a typical electric power plant yes here uh, just observe yes this is a uh, what uh, a solar pond this is what a solar pond okay so in this solar pond again it is divided into three uh, zones here also same thing a solar pond divided into three zones upper zone media intermediate and bottom only we have the bottom zone uh, for the evaporators and the top zone for the condenser also we may use in some cases we may use or in some cases we directly use the cooling towers if there is no cooling towers you can directly use the uh, top layer water so top layer water is always cooler one when compared to the bottom layer so bottom layer water is always having a temperature of 60 70 or 80 degree centigrade okay and here this uh, bottom uh, solar pond okay so here bottom solar pond is directly we have the pipe through that pipe okay so that is what hot brine okay hot water or hot brine or hot concentrated water directly into the evaporator chamber so there, there is a one chamber in that chamber okay so the chamber is with a this is a what chamber in this chamber it is having a so many coils clear and in this coil so what happens uh, the inside the coil there is a substance is flowing okay and that uh, coil is surrounded by a uh, this hot water and this hot water is surrounded by a coil so there is a heat exchange from the hot water from the solar pond to the a substance which is inside the coil so the substance which is inside the coil will absorb the heat from the solar water solar pond water and it will change the phase from liquid to gaseous that's why it is called as evaporator the substance will evaporate will change the phase from liquid to vapors okay and it have a high temperature that vapors have a high temperature and high pressure because of absorbing the temperature it is becoming high temperature and high vapor high pressure vapors and after doing this uh, heat exchange the whatever the solar pond water okay it will lose the heat to the uh, media which is present inside the coil then it will again back to the it is become a cold brine and this cold brine again back into the solar pond so this is what a continuous cycle clear it's a continuous cycle one side it enters uh, water that hot concentrated water into the evaporator after doing that uh, heat exchange again it is become a cold and it is entered into the same upon so that there is no wastage of water there is no leakage or there is no wastage of water it's a one cycle we can call it as a one cycle yes after the evaporator in the evaporator the vapors which are from the because absorbing that heat from the uh, solar pond wat water and this vapors with a high temperature and high pressure is entered into the turbine okay so it is entered into the turbine and in the turbine there are so many set of blades and these uh, vapors is projected onto the blades and it start rotate because of high temperature and pressure there is a series of blades and it will start rotate and if the blades rotate turbine also start rotating once the turbine rotating it connect with the shaft and that shaft another end of the shaft is connect with the generator okay and here because of this rotation this generator also start rotating and this mechanical energy means this heat energy converted into mechanical energy in the turbine and once the mechanical energy it is in the generator it will con converted into electric energy and once the electric energy is generated and it is taken back into the uh, power grid where you can store and we can supply electric energy for any other useful purpose and after doing this work and that uh, substance will become a low pressure with a high temperature vapors and these vapors again moving into the condenser after doing work and it is moving into the condenser in the condenser either we can use in cooling towers or we can directly use the top layer of the solar pond because it is having an ambient temperature we need a ambient temperature fluid so these uh, vapors from the turbine and enters into the condenser through the coils and that coils are surrounded by an water or an atmospheric air so that a lower temperature and this having an higher temperature there is an heat rejection from the substance to the atmosphere atmospheric air or water from the top layer of the solar pond and after giving the heat it will condense by giving the heat it will condense and it is become vapors to liquid again it is become 
vapors to liquid and liquid uh, substance again from the pump again into the evaporator so this is also another continuous cycle okay so here also there is no waste uh, there is no loss and there is no leakage it is also continuous condensing evaporating condensing evaporating in the evaporator absorb change the phase and in the condenser giving heat change the phase then come to the cooling tower and here cooling tower you can use the atmospheric air or the, the normal water for this cool the substance okay so this is what the a typical a working of solar pond here also same thing i explained the condenser evaporator turbine generators solar pond okay cold water hot water and cooling towers if you want you can use cooling towers if there is a not availability of cooling towers we can directly use the top layer of the solar pond so top layer of the solar pond having a less concentration and it is having a less heat temperature and here one more thing we have to observe is we have to maintain the concentration of uh, uh, salt in the bottom layer so continuously we have to feed the salt and maintain the constant concentration concentration gradient then only if more concentration more heat trap if the concentration reduces then it will reduce the heat absorption okay so this is what a uh, typical working of a uh, solar uh, pond with an electric power generation and here uh, some examples is a 200 square meter pond and with a uh, capacity of 20 kilowatt engine has been constructed so it's a typical application in a australia so in a 2000 square meter it's a capacity with a 20 kilowatt a solar pond yes next uh, is application of solar pond so come to the application of solar pond so this solar pond having an uh, so many applications in that we made some few important applications like heating and cooling the buildings it's an uh, application where we can use this solar pond or heat trap or a heat for heating the space or cooling the space if you cooling the space means we can use the air cooler uh, process that air cooler process run with the help of this solar energy and heating means directly we can use that uh, heated air into the space that's a one beautiful example it's an application it's a common application like heating and cooling the buildings or any uh, space space of buildings second one is production of power just only we discussed uh, electric power generation that is what the production of the power yes we can go with the that application next application is industrial process heating so some of the industries i told some of the industries need a uh, some reactions for reactions they need heat or for some processes like uh, etching or some uh, bleaching or some any other uh, process they need a heat as a media or as a uh, reactant so in that uh, we go with this solar pond and the solar pond can able to generate 100 degrees temperature easily and that 100 degree can utilize for this industrial processes and the fourth important application is distillation yes in the figure you just observe this is what the solar pond with a distillation so distillation means converting hot water from the sea or from the ocean to an drinkable water so that is what soft water distillation process in the arab countries or in the israel they are using this process for uh, generating the soft water or drinkable water so here it is a solar pond again bottom higher temperature top lower temperature and this bottom is directly connected to the evaporator where that hot water can uh, hot water or, or from the ocean can easily evaporate okay and here it is expands and in here it is an yes uh, uh, it's a condenser where that uh, our vapors easily uh, condense and we get the uh, drinkable water okay so this is what the one uh, uh, typical example in the distillation processes and uh, this is what the uh, um, electric power generation uh, figure okay solar pond with the electric generation power plant and next is eating animal housing and drying crops that is what in the agriculture purpose we can use this uh, solar pond energy for heating and heating the animal housings and in the uh, winter or in the rainy season we need a heating for uh, animal housing or in the for the 
human being also we need uh, heating purpose and drying crops yes that is a, that is what most important in the farmers so crops should be dry then only they have wettage if it is not if it is a wet they have very low wettage very low cost so you should uh, dry the crops of course there is a direct uh, drying with the help of uh, sun but uh, some situations like uh, uh, rainy season or in the winter uh, there is a less chances of sun so in that situations we can go with this solar pond energy and we can easily dry the crops and uh, heat for biomass conversion of course biomass conversion we know that biomass conversion means that uh, solid to liquid or gaseous there is a conversion it takes a lot of time and that takes place with the help of heat okay uh, then only uh, it will convert as a bio uh, products like biofuel or uh, whatever the biogas or bio solids so that takes place with the help of heat and for that we can use this solar pond energy for heating that biomass conversion so these are the typical applications where we can use solar pond energy this solar pond means it's having a three zones low upper intermediate and bottom in the bottom higher temperature just because of the salt what we added and it is trapped and that solar energy is absorbed because of the a black layer we um, placed under the solar pond okay and this uh, trapped heat we can use for these applications okay so in the next class uh, we'll discuss uh, solar water heating Thank you.